Thank you. More from Carol throughout the programme, of course. Uh, 12 minutes to seven is the time. Yeah, and it's the day or the weekend when we're going to find out where we might be able to go on holiday this summer abroad. That green list of uh, destinations soon to be released. Uh, yeah. Ben's looking at this morning. Do yes. you know anything? Huh? I keep being asked by people all the time. You've got any inside on, Wait, the, like on the green quite. list? I'm like, no. Today may be the day. We just don't know when. It's like waiting for this verdict from the Hartlepool, isn't it? Uh, I know you're going to keep a close eye on that. And I'll look at the travel uh, and where we may be able to go on holiday uh, this summer uh, in the meantime. Yeah, a lot of us, of course, waiting for where we might be able to go. But also, of course, what sort of forms and tests that you'll need to have to prove that you are fit to travel. So here we are once again in the breakfast departure lounge. Our bags are packed, but there is nowhere to go. And that is because non-essential international travel is still banned. For now, it is illegal. But that ban will be lifted officially on May the 17th. It is a big moment that technically will open the door to holidays abroad after four long months. But of course, there will still be restrictions on how and where we can travel. The ban will be replaced by a traffic light system. Countries will be ranked as green, amber and red according to the risk. Now, that will be based on how many cases there are, how many people there have been vaccinated and whether there is evidence of virus variants. Now, the traffic lights will also illustrate what restrictions we will face when we leave and come back. Now, for most people, only green list countries will be viable holiday destinations. That means that you'll need to take a test before you leave, fill in a form before you head home and then pay for a private PCR test when you get back. There will be, crucially, no need to quarantine unless, of course, you test positive. But amber and red list countries will mean more tests and self-isolation, either at home or in a special quarantine hotel that travellers will have to pay for themselves. Now, remember, the traffic light system only refers to when you're coming back to England. You'll still need to check the country will let you in and what you'll need to prove to the place that you are going to. So, the big question, where could be on the green list? The absolute biggie is we have no idea which destinations will be on this list. But the Foreign Office changed its advice on Tuesday. It did it really quietly, but not so quietly that some people didn't notice. So, we've seen that the Canary Islands, the Greek islands of Cos, Zante, Corfu, Crete and Rhodes. Portugal, except for the Azores, but that would include Madeira and Malta have all had their advice changes. So we're hoping this means that they might be countries that also appear on the green list. So not long to wait until we found out, find out for sure. And for the travel industry itself, that cannot come soon enough. Yeah, the last 14 months have been exceptionally difficult. You know, you have an industry that is essentially been shut down. Um, travel agents who have been unable to sell, um, unable to, to, to make money, um, to earn a living. Um, and a lot of these are small businesses that are all around our communities, around the high street. Um, and they've, they've had a really difficult time. We've seen um, over 150,000 redundancies in our industry. Um, and trading is somewhere around 90% down year on year. So it's a, an exceptionally difficult time. Exceptionally difficult, yeah, holiday companies, travel agents, airports, airlines, all very excited by this list to get reopened. But there are still lots of questions about availability and the cost of tests, about whether there'll be some sort of need for a vaccine passport and whether even things like travel insurance will still be valid. So lots of questions. Let's put some of them to the boss of the UK's biggest airline, Johan Lundgren, who is from EasyJet. He joins us now from Luton. Johan, good morning to you. Uh, what's your best guess? Where will be on the green list this summer? Well, first of all, we, we are have been looking forward to the day, this day now for some long time, uh, as other people pointed out in, in, in here before me myself. But look, I, I, I think that there is a good case and, and the latest scientific uh, studies that is done in this area show that actually much of Europe could end up on the green list because it is uh, proven that given the vaccination rate that we have here in the UK and also the prevalence that exists and the identification of the variants of concerns, that safe uh, travel can restart and that much of Europe should go on that list. Now, that's not what we've been hearing, but in, if that is the case, I think it's a missed opportunity for the government. And, and certainly from what I can tell, there's no medical evidence that suggests that that should be the case. So we have to wait and see what they announce later this afternoon. So lots of wait and see, and we know we've got to wait a little bit longer. Um, let me talk about TUI, one of your rivals. They've told us that they're going to offer packages, test packages you'll be able to get as part of booking your holiday. It'll cost something between 20 and £90. Uh, it's also going to offer free COVID insurance. Uh, will you do the same at EasyJet? 
we, we will absolutely look at what offers we can come up that is uh, uh, as attractive as possible. But it's important also to understand here that in a number of cases from the low risk countries, there isn't necessarily the requirement for tests. That is not proven that that would make sense. There's a number now of European countries, as an example, who opens up without any restrictions when it comes to testings or quarantines, if you are vaccinated, as an example. Uh, but uh, the, I was looking on to the government's uh, web list, uh, website and, and the, the suppliers there, and the average cost is still about £100 for a PCR test. So certainly that is not good enough for, for lots of people who, who will need to have them then as they plan the trip for the summer. But we're working with our suppliers as well, and we've got to do whatever we can to come up with very attractive offers on that. But once again, the most important thing is now to get these countries that you can travel to and from in a safe way onto that green list. And we believe that that should be the majority of the European destinations. Yeah. Um I mean, so many questions about what is an affordable test and if you've got a family of four, quite how much you are willing to pay to do that. Um, let's talk about the business as a whole, though. For the summer, can you afford to have another washout summer in the way that you had last year? You need money in your tills now, don't you? Well, EasyJet uh, was privileged and fortunate enough that we came into this crisis as one of the strongest airlines in Europe. And we've been managing ourselves very conservatively throughout the, this, uh, this period. By, by reducing the cost, make sure we have a, you know, enough of liquidity in there. But it's absolutely critical for the whole of the industry. The industry doesn't just consist of one, one player. You have airports, you have travel agents, you have various operators in here as well. And it's absolutely critical that we can restart now travel. And we believe we can do that in a safe way. So EasyJet is going to manage whatever situation gets in front of us as well. But, you know, we, are, we, we have so many so many questions from, from customers who are asking us the same thing. When can we start to travel? When can I go and see a family member that lives in, in, in one part of Europe? When can I go on a holiday? Uh -huh. And, you know, it's proven that it's safe to do so from low-risk countries. So that's what we're looking for the government to do now. Johan, it's good to speak to you this morning. Le Johan Lundgren there, the chief executive of EasyJet with us this morning. Uh, big question, of course, though, cost. How much could flights cost if there's a lot of pent-up demand? And uh, as we were discussing there, how much will those tests cost for us to get away this summer? That's it. That's a big argument about that as well. OK, Ben, thank you. That's what we want. 18 minutes past eight. Uh, the moment holidaymakers and travel companies have been waiting for we're expecting in the next couple of days, aren't we, that green list of destinations uh, for going abroad this summer. And Ben's off to the airport already. Got your bags packed? I wish. None <laughs> of us going anywhere quite yet. And that date keeps getting pushed back. Thanks very much. Uh, yes, all eyes, of course, on the news about where we might be able to go on holiday this summer, but also what sort of tests and forms that we'll need. Well, you may know uh, non-essential international travel still banned. For now, it is illegal. But that ban will be lifted on May the 17th. It is a big moment that technically will open the door to holidays abroad, but there will still be quite a lot of restrictions. Now, countries will be ranked as green, amber or red, and that will be based on how many cases there are. Uh, that's based on, as well, how many vaccines have been offered and whether there's evidence of new virus variants in those countries. Now, for most people, only green list countries will be viable holiday destinations. Travellers will need to take a test before they leave, to fill in a form before they come back and they'll have to pay for a PCR test when they return. There will be no need to quarantine unless, of course, you test positive. Well, both amber and red list countries will mean more tests and self-isolation, either at home or at a quarantine hotel. Now, remember that the traffic light system only refers to when you're coming back, you'll still need to check what you need for the country that you are going to. Well, some travel firms say that they will offer tests and insurance as part of the booking. Now, one of those is TUI, and Andrew Flintham is its boss, and he joins us now from Luton. Uh, good morning to you. Let's talk about these tests, because uh, all eyes will be on what we need to do, what forms we need to fill in. You'll offer them as part of the booking. Let's talk logistics. How will it work? So um, we've come up with a package of tests for customers, and as you say, it's their return to the UK tests. We've got a package for green countries, which is £20 a person, or a package for amber countries, which is £50 a person. And you'll basically go on to our dedicated hub. You'll book your tests. Seven days uh, before you go on holiday, you'll get your antigen test. Those ones that you have to take before you return to the UK, so you can pack them in your case. You'll then head off on holiday, have a great time. Uh, then 72 hours before you come back, you'll take those tests. We'll verify it. And therefore, you'll be allowed back through the, through the uh, PLF form, the government form, 
back into the UK. And then on day two, you'll get your PCR test sent to you. You'll take that and then you're all good and done. So it's a, a, a big package. We're heavily subsidizing it. It's available to all our current customers, so those that are booked already, but also those that hopefully will book with us in the coming weeks. Uh, I'll come on to costs in just a sec. I want to talk logistics, though, again. You know, what happens if the test is late? It doesn't come back. What does it mean for your flight? We're absolutely confident. I mean, the, the ones to return, you'll be taking them with you. We'll get those out well in advance. So there's not going to be a problem in terms of returning back to that flight. The day two test, we're working with a, a government approved provider, Chronomics. We're really very, very confident that the, those tests will be firm and back. We'll actually go covering the test rather than relying straight on the mail system. So the logistics, we're pretty confident they're going to work well. You talk about subsidising the cost of those tests. Uh, a lot of people watching will say, well, you're just going to put up your prices a little bit because we know demand is going to be sky high. People are desperate to get away. What commitment have you got to keep the prices the same, even with the extra cost of the tests and with the extra demand that you'll see? I mean, we're really hoping for big demand, given the fact we've been almost no demand for the past 12 months, 14 months. Um, our prices are, are very, very stable. They're pretty much like for like, flat year over year. There isn't a big increase in there. Um, we've got plenty of holidays to sell. Uh, I think everybody in the industry has. It'll be a long time before the ideas of trying to increase prices to make more money. We want to get people away on holiday, having a great time, because we think they, they genuinely all deserve it. And given that demand, which the consumer group raised a lot of concerns about whether there will be enough tests to go around, suddenly everybody trying to get away, everyone trying to get that test. Are you confident you've got enough supply? Absolutely confident. The, the supplier has guaranteed us uh, a, a significant number of tests, a test that are, are in excess of even our hopes of how many people will be taking away in the coming months. OK, Andrew, it's really good to talk to you this morning. Andrew Flinton there, the boss of TUI, all part of the big move for us to get away on holiday. That list not yet published. It's expected over the weekend to give us an indication of where will be green, where will be amber and where will be red. And crucially on that green list where we might be able to go away on holiday this summer. But remember, there's the extra cost of tests and forms and all that sort of thing to bear in mind. Yeah. OK, Ben, thanks very much.